A single idea has the potential to change healthcare forever. And the UK has an impressive tradition of innovation that has transformed healthcare. In countries where the government is suppressing free media, Twitter or any public generated content on the internet and social networks could be an invaluable resource identifying possible infectious disease outbreaks. Our final presenter is Dr. Patty Kostkova. She is going to talk about how e-health and social networks will improve global health by 2020. I have a question for you. How many of you have got this device on you at the moment? Virtually everyone. So my talk will show you how we can make the use of our day-to-day -day communication device for improving our health. As people and diseases travel the world, Europeans face an increasing range of threats from existing and new epidemics. Stockholm is where Europe's watchdog agency was set up. We have come to the ECDC, the European Centre of Disease Prevention and Control, which has got remit to support European nations and member states in regular surveillance of infectious diseases and providing scientific advice. Patty, this is our Hall of Fame here. You have the infected mosquitoes during the chikungunya outbreak in, in Ravenna. This one was during the tsunami response in Banda Aceh in 2004. This is in Iraq during the avian influenza cases in 2006. This one was a hospital infection investigation in Russia, minus 24 degrees. <laughs> Actually, the center was created after the SARS epidemic, where the member state realized that for such threats as SARS with a global uh, scope, then there is a need to have some coordination at the, at the EU level. In 2005, there was an outbreak of chikungunya, that funny tropical disease originating in Central Africa. So we decided to conduct a risk assessment because that's really what we've been created for. What's the risk for the EU if a situation emerges somewhere in the world? Everyone was convinced that indeed there was a risk for the mm. EU to see some transmission occurring there. So then the preparedness group start working with the member state to make sure that if it happens, we have the capacity in the EU mm. to diagnose it. Yeah. Nobody was able to diagnose that disease in the EU because it never happened in the EU. Yeah. And then in August 2008, we had the confirmation by Italy that indeed the uh, establishment of the local transmission in Emilia-Romagna had started. And it was exactly the story that our risk assessment showed. It was actually one guy coming back from India, meeting at the wrong time, the wrong mosquito, and starting a transmission, yeah, yeah, yeah. ended up with more than 200 cases. The spread of this disease from Italy was contained and the ECDC learned about how to prevent future outbreaks of chikungunya. Early warning of epidemics is crucial and that's why the team constantly monitors both medical reports and all the world's media. A daily meeting considers current threats. On other news, uh, there was an AWS from Belgium yesterday reporting an outbreak of measles in Guinea. We knew about this because it was on the media, at least, that there was this situation in Belgium. So they gave a bit more details about this. So uh, we got it in the media before we got we it did. from the National yeah, Authorities. Yeah. A week before, That's I would good. say. Last year was the worst year in a couple of years that we had in the EU for measles. And what you're saying is that this year so far it seems to be even worse. So. Twitter allows you to tell the world, or at least the followers, what you do at the moment. What you had for breakfast, whether you had a shower, which talk you're attending, what happened at your work. So what about swine flu? We have done a study collecting all tweets containing the word flu. How many tweets containing this world do you think we have received? Any guess? 10, 20, 1,000? Surprisingly enough, we received 3 million tweets from all over the world 
discussing some kind of aspect of the pandemic or forwarding some of these articles mentioning the influenza. So we look at these particular tweets and compared what the surveillance data from GPs actually told us about number of cases in the UK last year. And the Twitter discussion slightly anticipated the surveillance reported data. So the Twitter discussions in this large quantity, even though with the noise, which is part of it, can actually predict the pandemic up to a week in this case before the official surveillance, which is important to know for the authorities, for preparedness, for organizations like WHO, ECDC. The vast uh, amount of data can indicate there is some kind of public concerns and we can crowdsource the intelligence straight to those people who might be affected. Prior to the internet, my concern was to get as much information as I could. Now that I have internet, my concern is to get, I wouldn't say as little yeah. as I can, but as relevant information as I can. Yeah. I do feel a little bit skeptical about using using social media for early detection. I think it's definitely a, a tool or a development that we need to be following up very much in the way that you've been doing with your groundbreaking uh, scientific work. Don't you think investing into research into the social media and not just Twitter, including you know blogs, yeah. any of this user generated content on the web and finding out technologically better adjusted methods. Indeed, it could lives. be great to get some students or interns and get a project, look at the threats, what Google gave us, what the tweets would give us, what medicines and the media would give us. What, 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 the, what the blogs would give us. We have a new increase of cases in the Sud province. And in the, sud the beauty of Twitter was this was tapping into a resource people are using anyway. People are using in their daily life to tell their friends. We are piggybacking on this daily process and capitalizing on this new way of communication and using it for public health purposes.